Hi guys, it's Rob Meringue here. I hope you're doing very, very well. So today's video is called Depression Hates a Moving Target. I decided to come out because I live in um, England and despite how radiantly sunny it looks, believe me, within about 30 seconds, it could be overcast and gray. And I was, <laughs> I was deciding whether or not to make this video outside because of what the sun would do. Uh, but then I was sat still too long and realized, re-realized, rediscovered the wisdom of depression hates a moving target. So here I am. And if, if the sun goes away, then that's fine. Uh, if it rains, that might break the camera and we'll see how that goes. So it's been very succinctly and poignantly put by a brilliant man called Douglas Block, B-L-O-C-H, that I would rather be walking around depressed than laid in bed doing absolutely nothing you know, um, stagnating. I have found, um, and it's emphasized in these, tr in these trying um, lockdown times, that <laughs> staying focused on one thing for too long makes my depression worse. Also just sitting, staring into space makes it worse. Um, what makes it best is starting with some, um, with some exercise and going from activity to activity quite quickly. And uh, for example, like currently, I'm making sure that I do writing every day, yoga every day, meditation every day, at least two forms of exercise every day, um, and play with the dog I'm staying with every day, uh, hot shower, cold shower things, um, and <laughs> YouTube stuff takes up a surprising amount of time. Anyway, the point is I'd, I'm not getting chance to, to stagnate and be in the strike zone of the thoughts um, that I talked about in my daily habits for beating anxiety, depression, and um, depersonalization video. Hang on a sec, some little young ladies. I'll just uh, sort of shoot the breeze once I go past there. I see them quite a lot. And the whole neighborhood doesn't need to know my bizarre psychiatric history. Um, life really is a case of, you have a, lo a lot of potential in front of you, metaphorically or literally, however you want to think about that. And you have this navigation opportunity slash problem. Um, where you put your attention, 100% determines your experience. So for example, I was, I mentioned before, I was staying in, in the countryside with a friend during the whole lockdown thing. Don't worry police, I'm, this is less than an hour. Um, and I'm social distancing. Um, sorry, I, can't, <laughs> I, got, I got distracted by a bird dancing around a tree. Um, yes, as I mentioned, so my friend has some, has some horses and there's something about, there's the Albert Camus line about the, um, the kind of wisdom and happiness that's only available to the, to the most wise and the most dumb of beasts. Not to uh, insult horses too much, but you know when you see people like Eckhart Tolle or um, Sam Harris or Thich Nhat Hanh or Alan Watts, pe people who've, who've progressed spiritually, for want of a, a better word. Um, are totally relaxed, you know? And they have changed their, they've changed their relationship to thoughts. Talk about depression hates a moving target. How about when there's no target? <laughs> when you've stepped out of the target zone, psychologically, which is only possible through um, making a habit of spiritual practices like meditation or yoga, you know? You can't just do it once and it's a quick fix. Uh, most, things, <laughs> most things aren't like that. And a lot of things that are advertised like that turn out to be, um, turn out to be not so green and rosy, as I'm sure you've, uh, you've realised. 
So, another way depression hates the moving target is literally because the best cure for depression is exercise. Uh, scientifically speaking, and from my own personal experience, it literally it loosens everything up. It builds your muscles stronger. One sec. It lifts your mood. It fires endorphins and oxygen around your blood. It gets your blood pumping more. It literally makes your blood circulatory system veins wider. It makes your heart stronger. It makes your brain stronger, and all that serves to strengthen you and settle your mood and make you more psychologically strong. Because I was saying the other day in my um, feeling blue in the mornings video. I can be, uh, I'm distracted again. That is, that is the downside. Everything has a heavy price and the, <laughs> the heavy price of this is um, not only these trousers, but I'm getting self-conscious when I see, <laughs> see people and I've got to worry, wonder about um, waving at them. So we've discussed how depression hates a moving target psychologically and we've also now discussed how depression hates a moving target physiologically. Um, confinement. I remember uh, Christopher Hitchens was asked about the worst forms of pain and he said there are two, two extremes at each pitch or two pitches at each extreme. Um, one was the serious illness of a, of a child and the other one was um, thanks mate, en enforced idleness or en enforced boredom. There's a reason, there's a reason for prison as a punishment. Uh, I think it used to call a little easy cell in some medieval prisons where it, it was it was designed so you just couldn't stretch and you just couldn't stand up and that you know designed to, to torture depress. It's, you're stagnating, as, um, as Brad Pitt says in that zombie film, which I can't remember the name of. But he's trying to advise this um, South American family to go with him to avoid the zombies. I want a bit American. Let's go with him to avoid the zombies, and let's not get like eaten in the face and your throat like ripped out. No, he says um, I don't know. I can't remember what it is in um, in Spanish, but life is movement. Uh, la la vida es movimiento. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry about that. Uh, and he was right. And sadly, the South American family got killed pretty, pretty quick because they stopped moving. So when I get back, believe me, I get incredibly tempted to do things that are bad for me, and quite often. Um, do them. But when I get back, I'm not going to do like three hours of phone or three hours of yoga or three hours of working on something else or three hours of reading. I'm going to do half an hour of reading, half an hour of yoga, half an hour of working on YouTube stuff, half an hour of promoting music stuff, half an hour of talking to my friend, half an hour of playing with the dog. That kind of thing, you know? It keeps you, it keeps you sharp. It's like spinning four or five plates instead of one plate in a day, you know? And you, you have to chip away at life like that cost. <laughs> they, they don't teach you in school, but you have you can't, your consciousness and its, and its contents, what's arising in this field of experience, you have. And if you don't, <laughs> if you don't keep it entertained, or uh, focused, or exercised, or, or disciplined, or tested, you know, then it, then it will stagnate. Your, your physio, your psychophysiological being that is you, that is Tim or John or Jane or whatever your name is, will, will stagnate. And that's no good, is it? So, one thing about exercise, so I did a lot of running this morning, it's kind of money in the bank. For a while, a little bit afterwards, you don't feel very, <laughs> you don't feel better as such. Uh, you can feel like, some statics memory off, but it's only later when you, you know, at the, the end of the day when the, the sort of the memories, the memory bank of the day are sort of flooding, flooding back to you in little highlight reels of what you did, where you got to. Um, 
it's then you get a little instead of just being at a computer all day you get images of trees or a park or saying hello to someone walking a dog or complimenting an old lady's scarf or, so there's that side to it as well it just more and more colour and, and variation in your mind which is especially tricky when you've <laughs> when you've got derealization or depersonalization which is why I feel qualified to help you um, and when you're in lockdown whether you've got um, a nervous condition or not I think satisfaction or fulfillment or meaning which I think is a better a better aim than happiness you know, it's fleeting happiness by definition. The only way to get there is hard work and focus and dedication, and that's a total cliche. But you ask anyone who you admire, hang on, um, how much time they spent doing nothing, and how much time they spent looking towards their walking towards their uh, goal, whatever that is. Thank you. Um, be it material, be it material or spiritual. silence this one. one bit of advice would be change your relationship to silence because I've, I've got a friend who cannot stand silence in air quotes there's still lots, lots of noise the world is providing you can probably hear it now hopefully it's not, the wind isn't too bad the world's providing an orchestra of its own it's the wind and the trees and the birds and the cars and the footsteps and pavement and stuff like that but a lot of people think if the radio is off or if you're not talking then then things are silent and, um, and stagnant but no there's just this warm flow of experience if you really pay attention no such thing as the past no such thing as the future um all you <laughs> I walk past a lot of people all you ever have is is the, <laughs> is the present and the past and the future are Honestly, as a matter of experience, merely projections, either going backwards or forwards. This is what you've got, this moment, this now. Now, now, now. That's why people like psychedelics so much. LSD, magic mushrooms, you're so locked into, apparently, the present moment. Um, you, find, you find silence or boredom or just everyday stuff. So satisfying and interesting. <laughs> um, that you don't get bored. You either have an amazing time or a terrible time. Um, but it does go to show that silence itself can be um, I'm trying to help with the wind. Can be a moving can be a moving target and not a, a still one. You know, ask a lot of people what their worst nightmare is. Sat in a room on their own, I've been forced to do it, which is what a lot of people do. Um, <laughs> told, advised, uh, willingly leapt into um, self-home imprisonment as, as we, we seem to do. The government were very shocked when we did that. I mentioned before I made a long video critiquing the lockdown in the UK but just but I've done too. I've just <laughs> People who've been following this for a while will know. I've done too many controversial things already and have to take them down. Um, controversial because they're true obviously. By the way I've, I've, I feel I owe some of you an explanation which, which there's only in maybe one video of why I stopped making mental health YouTube videos. So, basically, I was about under a year into the channel, I think. Not far into it at all. And I was a whistleblower at the, at the school I was working at. This, this woman was psychologically torturing this kid. No exaggeration. On more than one occasion. I spoke to some friends. They all advised including a lawyer, they all advised um, reporting it because of the nature of her and the nature of the uh, crime. So I did that and then I had some time off with the illness and then I went back um, actually expecting to be on a similar wage but doing half the work because they were doing all the layers because of the government cuts and someone had told them about my YouTube channel and they had a huge thick file um, where I used to work with, <laughs> with screenshots of every single video I've done and I was told that um, I had uh, two options. 
uh, one was I, get, I yield to the investigation of the governors, which would have got the play counts up, but it would have meant all the governors of the schools watching all my videos about LSD and, and why I don't watch porn and things like that. Uh, I'm wondering where the hell I am from. Oh, it looks familiar. It oh, looks the same. It's kind of. It's kind of. Um, anyway, so yeah. Full investigation by the governors, board of governors, which I quote, um, you would not pass, or claim an out of court settlement, um, which I did in the end. And then um, I was finding it very hard to get work in schools, um, or finding it hard to. To sort of get that get that fact past recruitment agents for, for primary schools, you know, I've got this mental health channel. So I basically ended up for, for over a year taking down 95% of the videos, and I, I had so much momentum at the start, like thousands of views a day, and then the algorithm stopped liking me because obviously the ones I took down were the were the slightly controversial, edgy ones, which are obviously the most popular ones. Um, that was a huge pile of coming up. Uh, but in the and, and in the end, I did get three different contracts in Bath, but it wasn't worth the trade-off because a lot of the time I wasn't getting work and um, keeping all the keeping the whole channel on on lockdown <laughs> didn't feel didn't feel worth it anymore. And it wasn't helping my mental health because I was stagnating and I knew there's something in the background that I had to do and sort out and it wasn't happening and the rest of it. So. Me making these videos is hopefully walking the walk on um, on depression hating a moving target. Variety, discipline, kindness, exercise, and you'll be fine guys. Alright, take it easy. Bye bye.